Family means everything to me. Without family, you're absolutely nothing. There's no one to share your joys, nobody to pass anything down to. A man who comes home to no family is a lonely man. In the meantime, he's performing... Um, Excuse me, he's hard at work balancing, uh, performing, and being a minister. And this is what he has to say. I had to wait to get the green light. I'm a man who believes in God. I need him to give me the green light before I do anything. I had to make sure everything was in its proper perspective again. So right now, I'm back full speed ahead because I'm free. I'm in the studio. Hmm. 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 All righty then. Okay, Brandy and Quentin are lo no longer together. Oh. Yeah. I heard a buzz maybe three weeks ago. Upon further investigation, Brandy is no longer with Quentin. And I have a celebrity spotting of sorts that recently went down. Brandy gave the hand to Serena Williams. The Ricky Lake, you know, talk to the hand. Oh, no, you did eh hand well you know if if you know if you listen to the show or you know a little bit of their history brandy and serena were really good friends really good friends but apparently they're in new york for fashion week and they were backstage at a fashion um at a fashion show and serena and venus bumped into brandy while the three of them were having their photo taken behind the scenes and when serena tried to talk to brandy Brandy snubbed her, and so Serena asked out loud to her sister, what's up with Brandy? What's wrong? And then Brandy heard her and looked back and said, you didn't return any of my phone calls. In the meantime, the photographers were busy snapping while they were yap, yap, yapping along, and Serena apologized and says, if I did, it wasn't on, if I didn't call, it wasn't on purpose. They were making up right there, and then they posed for pictures, and, and that was the Luca Luca fashion show for spring uh, 2006. So they kind of made peace, and, and um, Brandy was still sulking. She sat back down in the front row, they say. Venus sat between Serena and Brandy, but then Serena tried to lean over and talk to Brandy, and she raised her hand to stop. So it happened again. Well, maybe, Serena, Brandy was calling you to walk her through the breakup process with Quentin. You know? Up in the morning, y'all. DJ, play that sound. What you gonna do? Get it popping. <clears throat> well, Brandy's back in the studio working with her brother, Ray J. Well, I'm just saying. The Roots' new CD is a must out. Oh! <laughs> How dare you? They have a they have a commercial with Madonna and practically everybody else. They're all squished in a phone booth together, and then Biggie comes up, and Madonna says, "No, Big, no." It's a violation for Madonna to say anything to Biggie. Yes. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Have you seen the commercial? I've seen it. Did you feel as offended as me that Madonna was addressing Biggie? Like, who are you? She don't even know anyone. I, I, I never did. It would never want to know Exactly. Like, I like Madonna, but you don't talk to Biggie. <laughs> talk to Moby. Dad, dad, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Jay-Z says that he might be coming out of retirement. Oh. He, he says... You're all hearing things about me. I can't do his um, voice. Yeah, yeah. Who's the comedian who does him so well? Stapleton. Not oh, and shout out to you, Rob Stapleton. I'm talking about dude from um, SNL. Oh, okay, I forget his name. Yeah, well, he's been here before. Finesse. He no, he plays every black character that needs to be played on SNL. Dean Winters. N Dean Winters is white. Oh no, he's not. No, no, no. This is Dean Winters. This is black. That's one that. Show. All right, never mind. Just never mind. Do you watch? Do you own a TV? Yes, I do. Why, why aren't you ever on the same page with the rest of the show? I read more than I watch television. I watch Discovery Channel. That's about it. All right, what do you read? Why don't you read something germane to the show? Like The Inquirer. I'm reading Talansky, if you may want to know. Oh. Thank you. By the noted author, Thomas D. Williams. All right. He has a daughter named Wendy. She's fabulous, don't you know? Oh, how dare you? <laughs> well... <laughs>
Uh, Jay-Z says, y'all are hearing things from me, but you just haven't heard an album. Who knows? I'm still in the studio getting on remixes and things like that, but it's the people. When people want something bad enough, it happens. And they want it bad enough, and then he laughs. He says, I'm holding out, but I don't know how long I can. Airy Spears, yes. Blabu. Yeah. <laughs> He holds up a sign. He's all embarrassed. You got the same <laughs> mic as I do. Why are you holding? He held up a sign that said Aerie Spears. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> okay, you all uh, continue to keep it where you got it. Uh, we must talk about Bobby and Whitney. <sighs> oh, excuse me. We must talk about Puffy's secret. Oh. <laughs> we, we must talk a bit about Brad and Angelina and Jennifer. And then we got to talk about Beyonce. Yeah. She didn't think we knew. Uh-oh. Everybody's got a past. Hey, Pharrell. No. Most deaf. Shut up. Let me just tell you something. Uh-oh. Everybody has a past. I did not want to believe that little R. Kelly insinuation that Kelly made backstage of the show, which re ultimately is what got Jay-Z so upset. Uh-oh. With, be you know, be mm -hmm. but everybody has a past. And um, let's not forget about that basketball player in Houston where she, you know, how do you um, imitate this? She could have used some of them pills that you got for your birthday. Oh, mm -hmm. these. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you listen to the show, then you know what kind of pills somebody sent Art for his birthday. Don't talk about it. I'm not. And we've just talked about Beyonce. Uh oh. So now we can move on. Everybody has a past, though. Everybody tries to play like everybody's all um, innocent. Mm hmm. Like a doorknob. Oh! Excuse me! Wendy, man. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. Hey, everybody, it's the Wendy Williams Experience. Somebody just wrote me a fax. Wendy, Foxy Brown, and Tyson Beckford say it ain't so. Well, I've never heard that one, but as good-looking couples go, that's a good-looking couple. What the hell you mean, say it ain't so? Hey, I never thought about them together, but... It's good luck. That's some black power for you. And some, some strong features and a beautiful chocolate baby. Think about that. Yes, yes. Oh, I like that couple. Foxy Brown and Tyson Beckford. So, I was just in the other room, watching the Tyra Banks show. Sarah Michelle Geller said that she wants proof that her husband, Freddie Prince Jr., has been unfaithful. Well, see, they got married three years ago, and according to sources, he has been hot and heavy with a sitcom star who happens to be on his sitcom. Now, I know he has a new sitcom coming out. I just don't know what it's called. But I can tell you one thing. She's not a plain old white girl. Her name is Jacqueline Ubrados. I'm, pro I'm probably saying it wrong, but she's Latin. Oh, I love it. Which means that Freddie's home. And I'm sure Sarah feels much like black women feel when they find out that their man is cheating with a white girl. It's like, not only is it cheating, but it, it's cheating and and there's a certain sense of, I guess, helplessness. Yeah. Like, what, what, what the hell? I gotta compete. Well, you know what? It's not really about competing as much as it is about... Well, damn, where are the similar? Like, like, what? Like, mm. Well, like when you find out your man is cheating with another man. Well, what the? <laughs> oh, hell, I just give up. You know what I mean? So Sarah Michelle um, says that, here's her quote, until I see 
proof Freddie has been unfaithful. I'm not going to fly off the handle. I'm a trooper, and hopefully our marriage will survive because we know it's not easy to do that in Hollywood. Uh-oh. Well, that's one foot out the door. That's one of those one foot out the door statements. Mm -hmm. Kim Fields, everybody, is working on a follow-up CD to her 2003 CD, Smooth is Spoken Here. And she's being produced by Full Force, Get Busy One Time. Oh, boy, Lady Luke keeps in touch and tell me to tell you hi all the time. Oh, hi, Lou. Yep. You know my gossip sister, Flo Anthony? She's legendary. Well, she's about to launch her new magazine. It's called Black Noir. In other words, black, black. And um, apparently, she's going to be featuring Vanessa Williams, the, the Miss America, in her first issue, along with um, a title for that article called 50 Top Black Women in Entertainment. It's going to be on newsstands on September 20th. So apparently, it's if you are one of those women and you're listening right now, too late. Are you on that list? No. I just said if you're... <laughs> Be quiet. Anyway, Flo says, I'm so excited. We also signed a huge deal with Fred's Discount Store, which is the largest discount chain throughout the South. Um, she's also is still doing her little syndicated go gossip um, show, and she's um, still one of the owners of Black Elegance Magazine, although she's no longer affiliated with the title. In other words, they're still cutting her checks. So, um, congratulations, Flo. I hope it all works out well. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I saw a rerun of Saved by the Bell over the weekend. It was the one where she's all strung out on drugs. And she, or no, it was the E! True Hollywood yeah, story. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> 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 All right. If um, if you went uh, to the movies over the weekend, I guess you were one of the people who saw Exorcism of Emily Rose. It made $30 million. It's number one at the box office. 40-year-old virgin is still in the top 10. Number two, Transporters, number three, The Constant Gardeners, number four, Red Eyes, number five, The Man is number six, Brothers Grimm's number seven, Wedding Crashers, number eight, number nine is Four Brothers, number 10 is March of the Penguins. 11 is Skeleton Key, of which everybody's pointing a finger at this point to Kate Hudson and saying, what happened? <laughs> She's down to like 80 pounds soaking wet. And she says that, you know, she delivered her baby through C-section. So therefore, it wasn't just that she gained 50 pounds during pregnancy, is that she had to lay in the cut and relax and, you know get her strength back up and let the incision heal before she started exercising. And now she's just taking it. Have you seen the, the now legendary picture of her with that hat on and that big T-shirt and the jeans? They're sending that picture around everywhere. That That's like getting email blasted everywhere. So Bobby and Whitney, um, they say now that she's clean and sober, she's ready to sell the infamous house in New Jersey. And... Sidebar, and hopefully the house in Atlanta too. Just like you know, just like start everything everywhere else, you know, someplace else. They say that um, she's looking at property for she and Bobby to relocate to in Vegas and Scottsdale, Arizona. Ooh, Scottsdale. I like that. I I like the idea of them, <clears throat> you know, you know. And Pharrell and Pharrell was really into her too, by the way. Yeah. Who is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know. The abortion word is legendary. Wow. 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 Oh, guess who's having a baby? On the flip side. On the flip side, yes. Guess who's having a baby? Miami Bialik from Blossom. <laughs> Disaster. Did you see her recently? Yes. Oh, she... Both buttons apply. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> well, she's, she's no longer our Blossom, but she's 29 years old. She's a woman. And guess what? She's due any day now. She's nine months pregnant. As a matter of fact, as I'm telling you this story, she very well could be going into labor. Oh, 
What by her husband, a UCLA administrator? I'm glad you asked. Named Michael Stone. Blossom ended in 1995. She spent most of the time afterwards studying. She completed her PhD in neuroscience. Oh, it's the brain. Yes. And is now in the middle of a mini comeback. And she said it uh, should delight the fans. Um, and, and that's that. By the way. I didn't. I never saw Kirstie Alley show Fat Actress, and then by the time I got around to seeing it, I thought that it was over, so I never bothered. She had a, a role on that show as the annoying neighbor, and you'll soon see her on Curb Your Enthusiasm, because that's her favorite show. But uh, to conclude and repeat the top of the story, Maya Bialik Blossom is having a baby. Oh. Nose and all. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Did he got a secret? Uh -oh. Did he got a secret? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Is this Mike Walker telling it? No. But it's one of my wag uh, people. Here's his secret. He loves to shampoo women's hair. Oh. He says that he likes to do it old school. And here's his quote. I do it old school, using a pot to rinse her hair. <laughs> I do it slowly, lathering her up, letting the water trickle over her. It's hot, though. Does he comb out the tracks afterwards? Ooh. Because I'm assuming he's talking about what he does to Kim Porter, being that that is his woman. Mm. Kim, like many of us, wears fake hair. Yeah. I know he's not talking about, you know, oh, oh excuse me, and... If we are to believe Naomi Campbell, oh. uh, you know, oh, I know Jennifer Lopez, but she wear tracks to finish off the bottom and to give her the dramatic effect that sometimes she'd want. Mm -hmm. The art of old fashioned hair washing is lost. Mm -hmm. So it's Madam CJ Walker invented that hot comb and then who knows who invented the weave. Yeah. We'll figure that out. That's nice though. I think I'm going to see Puffy on Wednesday. I'm not exactly sure. If there's something going on. Mm -hmm. Damn sure won't be here at this show, will it, though, Puff? Not yet. Uh-oh. Oh, I know. Did you just leave this on the, on the desk? Oh, yeah, I know. She left me a note. Tyra says her mom will play an integral role in the show and will appear often. Yeah, I've seen all this. <clears throat> yeah, I saw all the lead-ups to the show. How's it going so far back there? She's very peppy. Yeah. But maybe a little too much. Yeah. Well, the show looks like it's um, for 15-year-old girls, which for some reason I didn't think that, and that's not a criticism. I'm just saying I, I did not realize that the show, I knew it was going to skew younger than Oprah, but I thought it was supposed to be in that lane where life and style was supposed to be, you know, Kamora Lee Simmons show, you know, that would like interest hipper, not so Midwesty, kind of like a Sex in the City girl. If you'd be friends with Carrie and Samantha, you'd be watching Tyra Banks' show. I had no idea. It's if, you know, you watched her show if your name is Blossom. <laughs> Do you understand? I didn't know. I didn't know. My bad. <laughs> All right, so where else are we going with this? You cannot imagine that Brad and Jennifer and Angelina are about to do an interview. Okay, check the move. Brad and Angelina's interview is going to be done as soon as the divorce is finalized with Brad and Jennifer. Brad and Angelina will be doing their interview shortly after, in other words, I think it's October 2nd that the it's finalized, with Barbara Walters. Jennifer Aniston's going to take her interview to Diane Sawyer. See, I thought Jen said all she could say in the Vanity Fair. And quite frankly, I'm interested in seeing both interviews. And how much do you want to bet? Because Brad and Angelina are so quick to try to get their story out, Jennifer Aniston's going to be looking like the twisted crazy one. You understand what I'm saying? This is going to be one interview too many, and, and she will be exposed. Because while I wear my Team Aniston t-shirt, I only stick up for, like, if I have to make a choice on whose side to stick up with. I don't want to stick up for Jennifer Aniston either. Because 
in 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 my she doesn't know uh, uh, uh black people mm. Mm. I was a guest at the Delano Hotel Memorial Day weekend of 2001 and mm-hmm and Kelly were also staying there on my floor as a matter of fact I remember seeing mm, and ooh and Mo frolicking in the pool and wondered what she saw in such a common looking guy like Mo. I actually called you to discuss my celebrity spotting back in September of 2001. I believe that's when you returned to New York, but you neglected to mention Mo. I didn't see the relevance at the time, but it's all making sense now. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, back in September of 2001, I was I just got back to New York. As a matter of fact, this is this month we celebrate our fourth year back here. We were supposed to start the same week of 9-11, but, you know, then we started the week after that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like I was saying, everybody comes with a past. You know? All right, you all. I got to get back to the pink room. See what all is going on here with the Tyra Beck show. We'll be back. Keep it here. Wait for me. <laughs> Wendy, man. Michelle? Yeah. You're just having casual sex with him. Right. There is no engagement. No. He's got a girlfriend. So call. I'm pregnant now. Did I keep it? Wait, hold on for just one moment. I'm about to reach through the phone and crack her skull. <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's time to go. Okay, the Tyra Banks show is a mixture of dirty backpack kumbaya put it this way if you are remotely jazzy this show is not for you if you have an ounce of jazziness in your swagger this show is not for you it is for women who need directions on how to put on chap damn stick If you still wear a scrunchie and don't know what moisturizer, it, this show is for you. Yeah. I mean, I thought that this the, the Tyra show was going to be like, like I was telling you in the last break, like um, where life and style was supposed to capture that audience of jazzy, you know, 20 and 30 and hell, you know, even 40 something because like 45 is the new 35 and like that and, and jazzy. Do you, do you understand? I'm using that word a lot because my assistant, Nicole, uses that word. And, Nicole, it absolutely fits in this. If if there is anything jazzy about you, this is not the show for you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Like just getting started type show. You can't just get started when you get on. It's We talk about this all the time in radio with radio shows that suck. They hit the ground. They they, they start to build, you know, as they hit the... No, you got you to gotta kind of hit the ground running. You know, because people don't sit around like they used to back in the day for, you know, for you to get better. And it's unfortunate, but it's the times in which we let people don't give you a chance. So because they don't give you a chance, you got to hit the ground with the uh, she's doing makeovers at the damn DMV line. This is how you take a better DMV picture. <laughs> anyway, you ask what I heard you. What are the other celebrities doing for um, Hurricane? Well, as you already know, Sabrina Williams um, said that she's donating $100 for every ace she serves this year. Donald Trump is sending hundreds of thousands of dollars in bottled Trump ice water to always marketing. Because if they got enough water already. Drinkable water. Oh, sorry. Macy Gray is distributing uh, clothing and toiletries. At the Houston Astrodome, as you know, uh, Puffy and Jay-Z have jointly pledged $1 million to the American Red Cross, which, by the way, a lot of people are like, jointly pledged. Yeah, jointly pledged. Yeah. In other words, $500,000 a piece. But excuse me. They're doing something. Yes. And that's what's important. Focus. Hillary Duff is donating $200,000 to the American Red Cross and another $50,000 to food providers um, by the name of USA Harvest. Maybe you've heard of them. Morgan Friedman, 
has organized an online auction. Charityfolks.com. Go to that website. Get off the Gucci website. What are you doing? Charity.com. Charityfolks.com. Okay. And while we're thinking of giving uh, to the, the people less fortunate, Art is taking the Condoleezza Rice route and shopping for shoes. Did you read about that in the newspaper? Yeah, I did a radio file last week. Thank you. You're shopping for shoes this week. Yes. Yeah. Yo, you put in your um, time? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they made a big deal. Condi's shopping for shoes in Manhattan. Well, you know, <clears throat> her attention's supposed to be. What is on the auction? Just, you know, every once in a while, shout out some of the great things on the auction. I saw Oprah's picture, so what does Oprah's picture mean? Anyway, John Travolta and Kelly Preston, as we all saw in the news, they flew five tons of food in their private plane to the uh, victims. <clears throat> DeGeneres is donating $500,000. You know, her family is from down there. So, you know, that's what's going on with the celebrities. I got an, an email from somebody who starts out by saying, Wendy, Jennifer Aniston, I am so sick of this fake phony slut. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, she forgot all about the statements that she made in the past. She acts like she wanted kids all along, and he up and left her. She didn't want kids, and he bounced. It's as simple as that. Jen thought the world was sweating her and thought that she was going to skyrocket after friends, not realizing that they were only sweating her because she's with Brad Pitt. Now he's with someone who has all she wants. Him, a family, and a superstar movie career. And she didn't realize that she could have kids and a film career at the same time. What a dope. I'm extremely glad that Jennifer Aniston got dumped, and I'm glad that Angie is hotter than her. And she has her own history with men, don't you know, Wendy? On top of the history, she, excuse me, she, meaning Jennifer Aniston, has her own history with men, Wendy. On top of the history, she and Courtney Cox took turns sleeping with Adam Kurtz. Oh! That's how they became real friends, sharing schlong. Wow. 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 It happens. Wow. It's Hollywood. Wow. wow. You know what? Aniston was dating uh, Kurtz. But maybe it wasn't dating. Maybe it was, you know. Mm -hmm. Schlonging. Schlonging. Yes. I wonder if they ever had him together. Oh, my gosh. Fabulous. On whose part? All parties involved? All parties involved. <laughs> I wonder if they revisit that, that conversation then. Like, ever sleep with your girlfriend and then, and you know, with another guy? How does your relationship with your girlfriend go after that? Courtney, yes, Jen. Do you ever think about when we were both with Adam together? All the time, Jen. Well, I was just thinking. The next time Keanu comes around. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> and look, Jen, I know what you're saying. And we don't have to tell David. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm getting confused with my white girls. But you, you got what I'm saying. Yes. Courtney. Yes, Jen. Those jeans look really good on you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Jen, that was a one-time only thing. I told you we're not revisiting that anymore. <laughs> Courtney, we both agreed. We're not going to revisit it anymore. I was just saying that your jeans look really cool. <laughs> All right. Courtney. Yes, Jen. Uh-oh. What kind of bra is that you're wearing? Oh. Your breasts look so supple. <laughs> Jen, can you please? You're making me really uncomfortable. Okay. David is in the other room. Coco just laid down for a nap, and I told you we're not revisiting that. Oh, my God. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying that you're... Like, how can you say the most normal things to your girlfriend after that? Because everything is sexual. Yes. Who's going up the steps first? You go, uh-uh, you go, uh-uh, you go. I don't want you looking at my ass. Oh. No, you go. You Okay, we'll both go together. And like, how awkward. Yeah. Oh my God, it's time to go. <laughs> Everybody, I love you for being here. And I will so look forward to talking with you tomorrow. Cool. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> Party people, <laughs> see you later. Good night.
program complete. This is normally where I would take telephone calls, but there's 10 more minutes of the Tyra Banks show and I have to run in and just ride it out to the end. Yeah. But in our brand new studios, when Steve Harvey gets here, we're going to have seven second delay. And so then I won't have to take my phone calls. I'll just be able to take them just like this. Yes. Like that. Mm -hmm. But right now it is what it is. And we have to tape them first. And normally I use this 10 minutes to tape, except the Tyra Banks show is on. So I just have to go finish watching this and we'll take phone calls in the second portion. <laughs> Keep it here. The bonus hour is next on WBLS. WBLS has something for the sisters. Circle of Sisters. Buy your tickets for Circle of Sisters now and get a second ticket free for a limited time. Circle of Sisters. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I'm Love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS, New York. And unfortunately, the talk show is going to put the whack juice on, on America's Next Top Model. Tomorrow's primary day in New York City. Fernando Ferrer with the Spanish vote, with the Hispanic vote. Is that the move? Or is that Gifford Miller with the young? I like the commercial where he's sitting on the stoop. You know what I mean? So this is me talking to you from the stoop. See, Virginia is still in there for a fight. Wendy, they can't have the evacuees and Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston in Arizona. Are you serious? They'd better make a left. Scottsdale is not ready. <laughs> That's from Adrian. Adrian works at Bank of America, and he's based out of, um, what are you, Scottsdale, Age? Where are you based? What's your um, area code? I forgot. He's out there in Arizona, though. It's all hot. They got no good radio stations out there. He listens to us online all day. Faith in Brooklyn wants to, wants to know what's up with the fan forum on the WendyWilliamsExperience.com. <clears throat> Tell Artie to get it together. No, Artie is, where is Art? I don't know. Can you sit on the piano keys for a moment? <laughs> the fan forum, Faith, has been closed down. I'll tell you why. Because while you all were, you know, kvetching amongst yourselves, you all were getting very raunchy. And before that even got to be an issue with Palm Olive and, you know, Payless and whoever else, K Jewelers and stuff like that, you know, the, the website is also sponsor friendly. You know what I mean? So, you know, they can't go on there seeing you all talk about a toe is a toe, honey. You could put that where in here. You know, I mean, they can't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you all were being grown and, and, and you all were, you know, talking amongst yourselves. But, you know, and the Clorox people log on. They want to see, you know, how their banner is going on the website. And they run into you all talking about, mm, go to trannyshoes.com. You can find all the shoes. <laughs> and how Superhead weaves her magic and stuff. So, <laughs> Faith, Faith, it was taken down. <laughs> the fan form. Woo! Here's that fax that I was looking for, uh, like half the show. Wendy, that's a lie about the New Orleans woman spending her debit card money on a Fendi bag. The debit cards were never handed out. As yet, no money has been appropriated to the victims of the hurricane. Just trying to keep you well informed. That's from loyal listener TJ and S. Yeah, it was a few hours ago when, um, hold on. Wow. Wow. I can't drink the regular water anymore. I have to put the crystal light in it. <laughs> I can't. I was talking about how, um, I think, did we all hear this? Or is this an urban legend already? The woman got her hurricane relief debit card 
you know, from from one of the disaster organizations and spent it on a Fendi bag. And when she was asked, why, why, why? She said, you know, you only go around once. I mean, I don't know why you're clapping about that. <laughs> but, um, I mean, what are you going to say? If you've never been through a flood and had to run for your life, I mean, in situations like that, some would say you don't know what you would do. You know, when you when you make it to dry land, so to speak. <clears throat> did you do anything special for nine eleven? Did you um, did you gather your family together? Did you commemorate in any way? I know I woke up yesterday morning and um, on Saturday mo on, on excuse me on Sunday mornings I always wake up to the CBS news. That is the one time that I watch CBS is Sunday mornings. They got a pretty informative, you know, pretty good show going on there. And I usually wake up the same time on Sunday mornings as I do during the weekend. Even if I've gone out and been out until 4 o'clock in the morning, for some reason, I'm just up at 7. Now, I might nap later on in the afternoon, but, you know, I wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, lay in the bed, you know, and I watch the CBS Morning News. And um, they had a really good broadcast. And then everybody simulcasted in the middle. So it doesn't matter whether you were CBS, NBC, ABC. It's New York. And here in New York, yesterday, it was all about 9-11. Um, for a moment, I think that most people put New Orleans on pause. And then somewhere during the day, you probably thought about both and got emotional. Or mad. Or a combination of both. You know. I wanted to do something really nice and American for dinner tomorrow, yesterday. Like, you know, like, remember that day? Remember, remember after the terrorist attacks, how we were all one, per, one people, regardless of age and race and how many legs you have. And, you know, whether you went to Harvard or whether you didn't finish sixth grade, we were all one people for 48 hours, maybe 72 hours at, at max. That actually was a beautiful feeling. It, it was. So I wanted to have like, you know, apple pie and hot dogs and stuff. But it was Sunday. You know, that's that's Tuesday food. <laughs> you know, that it's Tuesday food in our house. But, um, you know. Then you look outside and you see the beams. Did you see the beams or did you come to the city? Did you go to Ground Zero? The beams looked beautiful last night. I mean, if... if you understand what I'm saying? They were blue. Last year, they were white. And at one point, weren't there two beams? Yeah. One for each tower? Yes. Why is there only one beam now, and why is it blue? For the, freedom, the new Freedom Tower. Let's go back and be erected. Okay. I don't like the beam to represent something new. I think that the beam... Should, I only saw one on the news, and I only saw one from the vantage point of our house. But then again, I figured, you know, maybe I was askew. But I saw two the years before. Both of them. Maybe it's the way the, the Kegel light yeah. was positioned or something. It was, so, it, so it is blue. That wasn't just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there one beam or two beams? Two beams. Two. Two. This year. I saw two. Oh, you did see two. Yeah, on the news. Okay. Oh. Was it blue? Yeah, yeah, look, look. Art, how many beams were there? I saw one. <laughs> and it was blue for the new Freedom Tower about the build. Can somebody who knows something <laughs> please fax? I saw two on the news. I know I saw two. <laughs> I saw two on the news. I saw two. Shout out to Steve Villanueva. Last night at the end of the UPN 9 News, they said, you know, they made mention that his brother passed away on 9-11. One of the firefighters from Brooklyn, you know. And then they showed he and his sister, his sister, um, Miss Villanueva, um, reading names. Oh. It seems like it was yesterday. I, I'm not far enough removed to read a name, much less... Watch other people read the names without getting like emotional. Do you know? Mm. Well, shout out to the firefighters and and rescue workers and and 
you know, everybody who played such an important part in, in that particular day and, and whatnot. It seems as though we were in it together yesterday, or by ourselves yesterday, Tri-State. I talked to a friend of mine on the West Coast. There was no mention of 9-11. Talked to a friend of mine in Virginia. There was... Eh. It, it's like an, an R thing. That's that's like us. That's That's not anybody else. That's us to remember embrace never forget teach our kids never forget teach our kids and never forget yeah <laughs> this, this music right here <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> yeah, but it's I'm the, at the music. It's right? the music. Listen the to how it starts. Shh. Wait, hold on. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Doc Severinsen. N1. <laughs> 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 when do you know the Tyra Banks show is going to be a flop, flop? She's trying to bridge the gap between older folks and younger folks. Well, that's cute and all. It will not keep the attention of those um, ad cases that watch TV regularly, including me. And what's up with that? She is going to be on Fox 5 in the morning after Good Day New York starting the 26th. And UPN 9 at 5 p.m. You are so right. They are trying their best to make sure everyone gets a chance to see her. Don't want it. Get lost. Put, 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 put that where? Back there. I still like the judge shows. Like, if I was home watching mm -hmm. TV this time of day, it'd be all about mm -hmm. Oprah, Dr. Phil, and then I want my Marilyn Million. Like, I want, I want Judge Alex. He's brand new. I'm so mad I don't know him. You know, because I've been doing afternoons now. I've been back in New York for four years this month. But but prior to coming back, they haven't added anybody new. So I've been able to really stay up with all my judges. Judge Judy's been there forever. Judge Marilyn. Judge, you know, yeah, Judge Alex. I got a new judge. I, I'm not even in court. Who is this judge? I want to know who Judge Alex is. I love a good court show. Oh, <laughs> I do. I do. I'm in court all morning before I come here. At 9 o'clock, I tolerate Regis and Kelly while I'm taking my shower quickly. I put my robe back on if I'm home. At 10 o'clock, I'm in court, Texas Justice. Mm -hmm. At 10.30, I'm in court, Texas Justice. At 11 o'clock, I watch the opening, what's all going on between the opening case of Judge Maybelline and what they're saying in the beginning of The View. And then I'm in, in and out of court from 11 to 12 between Judge Maybelline, divorce court, and, um, and The View. At 12 o'clock, I look at my watch and I say, I've got to leave. I have to get to work. I've been in court all damn morning. Do you know what I mean? And what do you think happens at 10 o'clock at night? Oh, I love the UPN oh. 9 news, but Judge Judy's on Channel oh. 10 WLNY <laughs> TV 65. And she's on for an hour. And I'm back in court from 10 to 11. I'm back and forth between the UPN 9 news and, you know. Judge Judy. About Judge Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the judge is quite the entertaining character. Jay, do you think that gag order still sticks? <laughs> I mean, because I still got the tape. At what point can we can we play that? Judge Mathis Never. lost it. Never. <laughs> judge Mathis knew I was on to something. <laughs> he called me a cokehead, thinking that was going to divert, like like he was out in me or something. Immediately got back to Detroit and fired off a cease and desist letter to WBLS. <laughs> Immediately. Cease and desist, cease and desist. So I said, hmm, well, there's a way around this because he forgot to cease and desist VH1 and they got all the footage. Now, if you were V to the H, what would you have done? Run it, of course. Mm -mm. They're not ready. They're not ready. It's, you know, they just don't, you know, what to do with Wendy? What to do with Wendy? You know, it's like when Charlie Murphy's weed fell out of his cigarettes. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Show it. 
<laughs> they, oh, what do they call it? Uh, legal and um, something or another. License and standards. What? <laughs> I didn't see the weeds didn't fall out of my sick and they fell out of Charlie Mathe. <laughs> as boring as that interview was, the most exciting thing was when I said, let's run your pockets. And we played the game show music. It's time to play Run Your Pockets. And it was a day when the VH1 cameras were in here. We were shooting another Wendy Williams is on fire show. And ba -ba 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 -da. he pulls out a wallet and some money. And then he gets to the cigarettes. Well, back in the day when I was an offender, I know what I used to keep in my cigarettes. It was more than just cigarettes. So I say to him, let's go. Let's dig further. And what do I find in his cigarettes? Yup. Exactly. I'm like, well, let's play it. We'll put the blue dot on it. I'll make reference to the chief. We put the blue dot. Wendy, license and standards will not have it that way. And furthermore, we're not running Faith Evans. She was a boring interview. What? They don't care if Faith is boring. They just want to look at her and hear what she has to say. Oh, each one. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they got Mathis wild and out. Then he goes to the other room and says to my husband, and I'll fight you too. <laughs> what? <laughs> and dude is like, yeah, judge, I don't get any points off beating up a, you know, an old man. Well, which judge isn't old, but you know his persona. You know what I'm saying? I don't get points. And the camera's rolling the whole time. You mean to tell that footing was charming footage. Mm -hmm. He threw his headphones down on the ground and walked out of here. Call or a... Uh, uh, an FHA, uh, FHJ, exactly, <laughs> but use the word, what? Ow. Call Art a queen, and Art said, down here, where is he? Art this was is Grace Mathis, and you're listening to Wendy Williams. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> yo, yo, and, and he said, Art said something to the judge, like, how you doing, judge? <laughs> I'll break you off a piece. Or He said, yo, the judge called Art a name, and Art didn't miss a beat with it back and the camera's rolling the whole time oh. the camera exactly mm -mm. and that was like in my second taping and i was like oh this fire <laughs> show is gonna be the fire the fire the fire you know i would have definitely used that in the best of it if i could have well the radio station got the cease and desist so fine but what the judge didn't do is claim cease and desist on vh1 so i'm like oh. Ooh, and people are gonna have to watch the fire show wow. and they'll get the audio and the video. Oh crap, crap, crap. <laughs> Nothing in our way. Except standard legal practices says <laughs> we cannot, uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, Wendy, oh, that's not the excuse this time. The excuse for us not using it is that nobody knows Judge Mathis. Excuse me? Maybe, and I understand what the V to the H1 is, but you know what I'm saying? When the, we got a compromise. I'll interview Rod Stewart and we and Debbie Gibson, and we get Suge Knight and play that Judge Mathis. And we're gonna get the perfect mix for America going on. Well, Wendy, we just don't believe that the Judge Mathis. What? You gotta be kidding me! Hey! Come here! <laughs> Yo, when the judge called you gay, and you were funny, you were standing about right there where you are right now. Remember the Judge Mathis before he threw his headphones yeah, down? Yeah, and he cursed. He cursed, that's right. Yeah, who you think you effing with? That's right. Yep. And now that lady called you gay. Yeah, because he said my pants was hanging down and you know what they do that in jail and all that stuff. And what did you say? You came back, Miss Artie, tell him what you said. I said, call me Judge, how you doing? You did say that, that's right. <laughs> the part that made the judge look like the real fool is, is that nobody got flustered like he threatened to fight. My husband, he called Art gay and he called me a cokehead and nobody was flustered and he looked straight up crazy. He, he asked Kev, you want a piece of me? And Kev was there to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, it's a, I just, and we got the footage. Yep. We can't run it.
Nobody cares. Nobody knows. It's it, you know what? It's just the point. We can't run the footage. Faith Evans is boring. Charlie Murphy's weed is beyond our legal practice. This is practices. Judge Mathis, and you're listening to Wendy Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the Hip Hop Honors comes on this month, though. I would have liked to see you between Russell and Ryan for that show. <laughs> that would have been great. Nobody uh, cares, Wendy. We're going to run another Brady Bunch show and discover the Hogans. Mm. And hey, how about the new season of Surreal Life? That's what our audience cares. Oh, and let's not forget... What's the white girl's name who um, who's like the voice of the channel? I always forget her name. She's so nondescript to me. What is her name over at VH1? Oh, no. I forget her name. The, 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 that, who, what is the one of Kristen? <laughs> <laughs> I look at Kristen because she's the white girl. No, but you know what? What is her name? She does all the interviews and stuff over there. You don't even know. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> we need the main person of our channel to be less remembered so we stay out of everyone's way I forget the child's name I forget it Rachel oh oh well look all I'm saying is that the hip hop <laughs> honors um, that show well you know what it would have been nice alas even the voice, even the voice of the hip hop on your show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did you listen over the weekend while you were watching? Yes. They got some good stuff, good programming over there. But I get angry. <laughs> Yo, the VH1 Hip Hop Honors coming on September 22nd <laughs> at 9 p.m. Why couldn't I have done that? Yeah. Better. Oh, I know. I don't sound hood enough. You see, uh, when they want to go hood, they want to go hood. Yeah. Other than that, we need straight middle America and Rachel Perry fits the mold perfectly. <sighs> I don't get it. Why am I always the square peg in the round hold art in the hole? Trevor, what's the music? Always the square peg in the round hole. Nobody ever understands what the experience really is. And I don't know how to judge it to change it for somebody. I don't, you know. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like when you judge to change, you end up with the Tyra Banks show on TV. No! Which has officially put the whack juice on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> okay? That's what happens when you try to fit into somebody else's vision of who you should be. <laughs> that is what th happens. That's what happens. That stupid talk show that she has right now, <laughs> which is not, is not stupid. You get an E for effort, girl. But that has officially put the whack juice on America's Next Top Model. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, Jessica gets it in her town in Springfield, Massachusetts. She says that she gives it a 7 out of 10. She says um, she showed how much her pictures are airbrushed before and after. She looked twice the size as she did before. I think it's nice that she would show and talk about that and took her makeup off and everyone else in the audience did also. All right. Thanks, Jessica. A major power outage has hit Los Angeles as we speak. Well, uh, the city's tactical alert is on, they say. That's what a spokesperson for the police department says. A tactical alert um, is what happens when the city goes into a state of emergency. Police officers will only be responding to calls where there is a life-threatening situation. Oh, in two seconds, the lawlessness is going to start then. Oh. What? Everybody's alarms are off their houses. City traffic lights are all akimbo. Mm -hmm. Every cop is needed at every intersection. What? They have They have um, rush hour coming up in about two hours there. Oh, wow. 
there's a major disruption, says uh, the Los Angeles um, Fire Department Chief, Jim Wells. It's a widespread disruption. It's not immediately known how many homes and businesses are without power, though it was known to be thousands so far. And they have, they have not pinpointed the trouble. Terry, ha um, Terry Hatcher is going through it with Rachel Hunter. Terry Hatcher, you know her from um, Desperate Housewives. Rachel Hunter. I like Rachel Hunter. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she's 36. She was married to Rod Stewart. You know, she came into the business hoary-like. But then she grew into her own woman. You know, like you can outgrow those years. Like nobody looks at Jerry Hall as being hoary-like. How did she meet Mick, Mick Jagger? What was she... Hello. I mean, what was she all up to before then? Like, you can outgrow Hodum if you if, if people are distracted with other stuff. <clears throat> so, apparently, um, Rachel Hunter made the remark. Here's the quote. When women get too skinny, like Terry Hatcher, it shows in their faces and it ages them. That's what she said for a British magazine called Reveal. I would agree. You know, that's why you get some of the fat taken out of your, the other part of your body and put into your face. Sure, that's the best kept secret. Joan Rivers will tell you that. Everybody will tell you that. Like, lose weight for your body, but as you get older, you don't want to lose weight in your face. If you find that you have to lose weight, at, you know, to bring your body down and it starts bringing your face down, you harvest fat. You harvest it. Sure. You get it pulled out of your muffin right right above your low-rise jeans because you're 50 and you still must wear low-rise jeans you know 50 is the new 40 is really the new 35 so your low, your low-rise jeans you get the muffin you know the fat over the top removed and you get it put in your face so you don't look so sallow say and i would agree terry hatcher could use some harvesting Kid Rock and Pam Anderson are back together again. I love how she's just like pimping the man. <laughs> now you could say they're pimping her. Think not. Her first loves are her sons and she's made that clear. And she pimps them and she lets them know. Like Pone says in his comedy on Wednesday nights. Tommy, this is Kid. Kid, this is Tommy. Tommy, you got Wednesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> Kid, you got Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Adam, you got Mondays, and you're brand new. You might not have that. Mm -hmm. Now all you get along, and 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 welcome to my circle. She's pimping it, and I love it. I love it. By the way, Keanu Reeves is not dating. Um, exactly. Is not dating a woman too old to care how you doing or not. And that would be Diane Keaton. They're not dating. You know, his engagement is over. He got engaged for a minute to throw us off the how you doing track. That rainbow trail. But the engagement is over. Diane Keaton is 59. Both of their reps are denying them dating. They both, you know, co-starred with Jack Nicholson back in 2003, the movie called Something's Gotta Give. And Eva Langoria, and I'm telling you right now, and I saw this for my own eyes on one of my VH1 fire shows. Check the move. Who is she supposed to be dating right now? Tony Parker. Even even Art knows, and he does not very, he's not very knowledgeable about pop, uh, about certain things in pop culture. Tony Parker, right? Yeah. If you'll notice, and there's, there's only been four fire shows in three years, so it's not a lot to keep track of. <laughs> if you'll notice, in one of my fire shows, Eva Langoria and Mario Lopez walk way over there. I can't even reach them with the microphone. None of the paparazzi can. And I say to her, Eva, are you with Mario Lopez? Oh, how scandalous. I love it.
Mm-hmm. This is like three years. This is maybe two years ago. I've been with VH1 for three years. Are you guys just nodding or do you really recall? I don't remember. Maybe they can judge up in a thon or something like that. You zoom in on that. I'm telling you. Mario Lopez, who's a whore in his own right. You know, he was married for two weeks to Ali Landry. And, you know, he's like one of them six addicts or whatever. So Eva and Mario were spotted dining at Nobu in Los Angeles at the end of at the end of August. And they say they're just friends and she's really happy with Tony and all like that. But there have been a lot of spottings of Eva and Mario. And they'll flare up and then go down before anybody gets a chance to talk about them. There's something going on. That's another one pimp in the game. She got her men in line. Tony, this is Mario. <laughs> Jay Jason, you're on Wednesdays. Mario, I'll get to you when I can. Tony, you are in my A-list position. In other words, if anybody asks me who I love, I say you. But let's be clear. Tony, this is Mario. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love it. I mean, it's a lot to keep track of and everything. But the gifts are great. Yeah, but if, when you can buy them yourself, do you even really need those? Yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? I mean, they're just wearing that out. And by the way, she is replaceable. I was thinking about her replacement over the weekend. Somebody I'd be perfectly satisfied with. This Eva Langorio on Desperate Housewives. Alyssa Milano, hello. Oh, he's screwing up his face like he ate lemons. Why? Oh, there ain't no comparison. Listen, Melissa, Melissa Milano, she would have, the reason that you don't compare them is because for a lot of us, Eva Langoria came to us as the girl from Desperate Housewives. You know Melissa Milano as being a Samantha Maselli, Alyssa, excuse me, as Samantha Maselli, you know, like a little girl and stuff like that. So in your mind, you got to struggle with the sexiosity of it all. Not me. All you got to do is watch her on Charmed a couple of times and on, um, you know, uh, I, I picture her doing that role. All dark, you know, in the hair, evil in the eyes. She could do it. She could do it. I'm not saying Eva Langoria should be replaced, but I was just thinking about that this weekend. I don't know why. There's a story I would really love to share with you all, but I got to concentrate on it before I share it. it. It's titled Lynch Mob Kill Man for Raping Girl Age 7. And apparently the seven-year-old girl was raped and killed when a haven, uh, excuse me, when a haven for survivors of Hurricane Katrina degenerated into a lawless hellhole. So... They say that this happened at the Louisiana Superdome. That was the haven. The girl's attackers, they say, um, was beaten to death, the particular attack, and thrown from the balcony of the Superdome. This was one of the many horrific stories repeated by hurricane refugees who had sought shelter in the football stadium but encountered only robbery, drug taking, and even more death. One of the witnesses' name is Linda Lang, and she's 46, and she said of the rape victim, she was such a pretty little girl. Her hair, her skin were so beautiful. She was black, light skin, and wore a pink silk dress. Two National Guardsmen carried her on a gurney right past me. One of the soldiers told me later the rapist had snapped her neck after he did his atro- atrocious deed. I'm crying now when I think about the poor, innocent little girl. Lang was one of the thousands of hurricane victims bussed to the Astrodome in Houston after spending days caged like animals in the New Orleans stadium. Other victims said that the rapist who attacked the little girl was himself killed by a lynch mob who attacked him and threw him over the balcony into the surrounding floodwaters. Lang said that at least 25 escaped inmates from nearby flooded prison were among the refugees. I saw the orange and white wristbands that jailmates wear. The rapist was alleged 
allegedly preying on women and girls as they try to use the female bathroom in complete darkness. Mm -mm -mm. Police were unable to confirm the killings, but in other accounts that appeared to be of the same incident, David Ducros, 20, said one rapist was killed by the crowd who threw him outside threw him from an outside balcony to join other bodies floating in the water. James Holland, 25, who sought shelter in the Superdome with his pregnant wife and three-year-old daughter, said one rapist, one man raped a little girl in the bathroom. The crowd found him, beat him to death before the cops were able to get there to intervene. A second rapist who attacked a 13-year-old girl was said to have been beaten by angry refugees. It was an old white guy with tattoos and the soldiers told me later he had raped a 13 year old girl they told me a bunch of people had attacked him one of his eyeballs was hanging out he was beaten and bloodied from kicking and stomps stomps from the crowd I heard another report that now they're dealing with all kinds of people like sex offenders it's like there are so many factions of people that have to be place and in the in the case of animal type behavior corralled like mm -hmm. like sex offenders now you got these people you got the records washed away mm -hmm. you see the records are washed away you know i don't know how you corral the sex offenders but they're moving into communities i think was matter of fact one of those communities was out in arizona where they oh I'm fuzzy on the story. I was back and forth with Judge Maybelline. I heard it like 11 o'clock this morning. I'm with Maybelline and The View and, and watching. I was watching the Fox News Network and they were talking about this. I, we need to go into a break, everybody. Um, oh, thank you, Goose. This hour of the Wendy Williams ex is brought, experience excuse me, is brought to you by Royal Caribbean Caruses. Uh, what did I say? <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> this hour of the Wendy Williams experience is brought to you by Royal Caribbean Cruises. You know about them. Need I say more? Fabulous. We're sailing aboard Royal Caribbean, as a matter of fact, for my party cruise in November next month. Yeah, the Bodylicious. Bodylicious party cruise. It's Royal Caribbean. You can go to BodyLiciousCruise.com to find out more information or go to my website, TheWendyWilliamsExperience.com and find out more information. Or I have a telephone number that you can call. We're sailing on Royal Caribbean, as a matter of fact, November 4th through November 7th from Miami. You'll fly to Miami, then we're sailing over to the Bahamas. Nassau, Paradise Island, Coca Cay, the Bahamas. 877-878-3262. Party, 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 speed date dialing. Party, 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 the drinking, the casinos, the spades, the great time, the jet skiing, the parasailing, the party, party, parties, what? The food, 24-hour food service. I'll see you on board November 4th through November 7th, 877-878-3262. 877-878-3262. It's the Bodylicious Party Cruise, and I'll be on board saying, how you doing to you? How you doing? All right, uh, we have another sponsor this hour, but I've overtalked the break, so I need to save this particular sponsor until we come back from the break. And I've got something for you to win. All right, so keep it where you got it, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience until 7, and then it's Bonnie Harper with the Quiet Storm right here on 107.5 WBLS. Oh, hi, everybody. It's the Biz Marquee. It's the bonus hour of the Wendy Williams Experience. Hello. Don't forget September 19th. We got a brand new thing going on in the mornings. It's actually a repeat of what you heard for one full week. I was seduced by the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And I hope that you were too. Now he's back. We got him locked down. He is our morning show guy. And he starts here with the Steve Harvey Morning Show beginning September 19th. So it's Steve in the morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then I'll be here in the afternoon holding you down. <clears throat> Shout out to everybody in Stanford, Connecticut. Guess what? Bob Lee is going to be there on Saturday night for the WBLS Live broadcast at Cafe Bahia. Cafe Bahia is at thir uh, 320 Greenwich Avenue in Stanford, Connecticut. And it's Connecticut's only true adult nightclub. So don't forget that Saturday night. And Bob Lee will be there. 
How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Bob. <laughs> oh, we're only playing with you, Bob. Oh, Bobby. Saturday night, he'll be at Club Bahia. Switching through the club. Uh, I'm just playing. <laughs> Listen, WBLS has got your chance to um, go to a live taping of the second annual VH1 Hip Hop Honors. It's Thursday, September 22nd. You're invited before me. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> My own channel. I haven't even gotten invite the first. No red carpet assignment. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. Faith is boring for, for my show. However, she's going to be featured at Hip Hop Honors. Kanye West and Common and Terrence Howard, they're all going to be there. And the taping is on Thursday, September 22nd. <clears throat> this is going to be a great show. It's hosted by Reverend Run and his brother, Russell Simmons. And then it's going to premiere, because, you know, the taping is September 22nd, but it's going to premiere on Monday the 26th. Look at that turnaround time. Turning around the shows. You know what I'm saying? I got a turnaround time of like eight months. Not the Hip Hop Honors, boy. Four days to turn it around, put it on the, radio, put it on the TV. Monday, September 26th. I'll be there watching because <clears throat> I won't be in the building. So, caller number ten, uh, 10 wins those passes right now. Oh, look who's here. <clears throat> Zoe's here. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Zoe. Excuse me. Hi, Zoe. <laughs> Hi, Miss Wendy. Zoe, I have a pair of jeans for you. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. So I can have the muffin top Well, you know what? I don't think that these are low-rise jeans. I have jeans I and a top. And a shirt. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. I think you'll be able to jump right into these. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you'll be able to jump right into those. Just check them out. I think they'll be very flattering. Thank you, Miss Wendy. <laughs> You're welcome, Zoe. I was thinking about you. We have to go back to commercials? Well, go slow. <gasps> I'm going to talk about it. I'm, I'm getting my, my way into it. When a spot says it's live spots, I incorporate it in with conversation. <laughs> now watch how I do it. Zoe? Yes, Miss Wendy. And there's also um, an invite that I won't be able to go to that I thought you might enjoy going to also. Okay, <clears> thank you. Nicole has all the information. Okay, <clears> I'll <throat> Now make sure you get it from our caller tonight because I think that it might be tomorrow. Okay. Or, or Wednesday or Thursday. I know it's this week. I have her number. Okay. You know what I did this weekend? I went past um, a new client of the WBLS family. Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, located in Secaucus, New Jersey. Thank goodness. I've spent so much time going to ABC what and what and what with the big prices and, you know, everything's all scattered around. You ever been to that place to shop for rugs and, and furniture? Not the look. Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. I'm telling you, they cut out the middleman. Originally, it was a wholesale store. Now it's a retail store with wholesale prices. Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. They carry a variety of lines, including Martha Stewart Signature Gallery. I'm not talking about flimsy stuff. I'm talking about the zhuzhed up high quality stuff that you want to have when you go home. Because now you've created for yourself a home, not a flop house. You know, it's been years since you did college. And you want a home. But you're still mindful of your purse, as we all are. You don't want to spend all your money. They are also launching the owner, Stephanie Cohen's designs. Stephanie is a design genius. And if by chance you don't exactly know how to put a room together, the great people at Benjamin Rug and Home Imports they also have interior design services on premises. They'll come to your house. They, they make suggestions. They do wallpaper. What? Yeah, I said wallpaper. It's not like the wallpaper from the 70s. Wallpaper's got a whole new face. I got to tell you something. Their prices are right. You're going to love the second floor with the classic gallery. And if you love, if you're like me, you're looking for something contemporary. They've got that on the first floor. Traditional and contemporary stuff is on the first floor. 
It's Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. Now I'm going to give you the address. You're going to faint. And I'm going to give you the telephone number. It's in Secaucus, 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Is that convenient to you? See, for me, that's on my ride home. I go Route 3 to Route 46. Right there, 20 Meadowlands Parkway. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday fits well into my schedule. Sunday, they're open noon to 5 p.m. The website is not developed yet, but I'll give you the address and the telephone number again for the fabulous people at Benjamin Rug and Homes. The owner, Stephanie Cohen, and her husband, they worked so hard to get this place together, and the prices are right. They got all kind of great rugs for your floor and whatnot. And you just have to go and look. Go and look. 20 Meadowlands Parkway, 201-617-9000. It's safe to say Wendy Williams told you. 201-617-9000. Stop by. I'll tell you. C, 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 what? Not anymore. You don't want pressed wood with laminate over it anymore, do you? Put that where? Back you in. want furniture at a great price. Keep price in mind as I talk to you, because you know I'm uh, very frugal. 201 617 Benjamin Rug and Home, 20 Meadowlands Parkway. Damn you, I'm going home. Oh, Zoe, here's the price. Let me say congratulations to Dina Peace from Plainfield. Why? Because she won. Oh, congratulations, Dina Peace. <laughs> Dina's going to be sitting in the audience for the VH1 Hip Hop Honors. I'm sorry I didn't give you the sheet, Zoe. There you go. You can transfer it. Okay, everybody. Are we set to um, part ways? Vaughn Harper's up next with The Quiet Storm. I love you for listening. I, lo I love you. Thank you. And we'll talk tomorrow, God willing. Bye-bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh.